The European Union and other global partners have pledged more than 7 billion euros to try to speed up development of a vaccine against COVID-19. Public health experts say an effective vaccine is the only way life can get back to normal. But it has to be accessible and affordable for all. EU President Ursula von der Leyen says the money will kick-start unprecedented global cooperation. But two of the world's worst affected countries, the US and Russia, have opted not to take part. Well, Jack Parrick tells us more. Please take the floor. An international race without competitors. In just two hours, 7.4 billion euros promised on the Global Response Pledging Conference hosted by the European Commission. The aim is to find the vaccine for COVID-19 as quickly as possible and to make it affordable worldwide. Today is only the start of a global pledging marathon. The second objective is to bring under the same roof all global health organisations working on initiatives to fight the pandemic. The money comes from all around the world. Committed up to £744 million. Pounds. More than $850 million. $100 million towards this effort. The funds have been raised won't only be for vaccination, but also for treatments and testing. €4 billion, €2 billion and €1.5 billion, Euros respectively. Hundreds of labs in several countries are working to develop the vaccine, but only the most advanced ones will be given public funds. You can't take 100 vaccines into uh, late-stage testing and into manufacturing and scale-up. So the world will need to down-regulate into a few vaccines that look promising. Those vaccines then will need to be produced in very large numbers. So not just in probably the original company, but probably transfer the technology to other companies as well to have large amounts produced. It's hoped a vaccine will be available within 18 months soonest and more money will be needed to make it accessible in developing countries who will also need it to prevent a new wave of infections. Jack Parrick, Euronews, Brussels. Well, let's find out more and speak to our correspondent, Shona Murray, who's in Dublin for us. Morning, Shona. Uh, it's a large pot of money, just over seven billion euros. Where's it all going to come from? And the big question people will have is, will the people who've pledged that money actually deliver on their promises? Yeah, actually, excellent question, uh, Rosie. First of all, of course, the money is coming from global governments. Some of the wealthiest uh, governments in the world, the likes of Saudi Arabia, which is the chair of the G20, Japan, Canada, Norway, for example, pledged €1 billion uh, euro as well. Uh, also, philanthropic organisations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, even $1 million from Madonna. Uh, but as you mentioned at the start there as well, uh, notable by their absences was, of course, the United States and Russia. Uh, but it's also, as I said, a key question Often in these sort of pledging marathons of the United Nations and elsewhere, you do have countries pledging money and it rarely fully materialises. Sometimes only pittance materialises. So there is a question around whether this will actually work. And of course, there's a full acknowledgement that the amount that was raised yesterday, 7.4 billion euro, is actually just the start, the most initial shortfall required. Um, but really there is a feeling and an acknowledgement that in the last few months, the fact that lots of countries have treated into their own individual units means that, that an obstacle for a vaccine has actually been created and there's an acknowledgement really that the global community can only fight COVID-19 if it works together if it pools its resources in creating a vaccine and also creating resources to ensure that the world's poorest people are vaccinated. Rosie. Shona thank you very much.